How quickly did it affect your work? Immediately. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing that happened is the producers and directors came to us and he said, can you edit this stuff? I thought, I guess I, you know, I guess we could find out how to edit it. The problem was is that videotape had no pictures per se. There were no images that you could hold up to the light and see like you could on film. No reference points. No reference points. It was all magnetic stripes and little pits and things like that. And the only way you could see those little uh, magnetic striations were by taking um, a solution of what is known as carbonyl iron, which is extremely fine iron, that attaches itself to the magnetized patterns on the videotape and makes them stand out. And there are places that you, we found out you can edit and places you can't edit. And there are actually, I guess you'd call them frame lines, but they are, they're really invisible until you develop them out. You've got to be able to see the, uh, uh, the image and know where the end of the frame line is before you can actually make a cut and, and splice the tape. First time we tried it, um, there is a thing called a control track uh, on videotape. They're equally spaced pulses, which are essentially like sprocket holes on film and they maintain a constant speed of the videotape. Every six seconds? No, it's actually, it's actually every 60th of a, of a second. Uh, there's, there's a whole string of these little pulses. And the problem was, you try to make a splice and you think you're in the right place, and you make a cut and you glue the two ends together, and the picture jumps all over the screen because it rolls vertically and it takes four or five seconds for it to stabilize. Now that's a lousy edit. And so I, I became a, uh, the first videotape editor there because I could make more good splices than bad. I mean, that's not a very good criteria because I guess I, it was luck. It was more that I could hit the right spot more than other guys did. So they made me the first tape editor. Well, I found out later that the reason I was having this problem in making tapes, videotape splices on this two-inch wide tape was the fact that there were a double set of control track pulses, which, <clears throat> excuse me, did not allow um, us to define the end of a television frame. So we got the engineers at NBC to modify the signal in the machine and eliminated one from then on. <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> every one of those was a, uh, excuse me. I didn't sure. Go ahead. So it was uh, very much a hit and miss proposition yes, to was. begin with. Mm -hmm. And then you devised this, you and your associates devised this plan to be able <coughs> to, to read the videotape and find Correctly. out where you could make right. the cut? By developing, putting this carbonyl iron on, we used a little film cement bottle that, that film editors use, and, but we fill it with alcohol and carbonyl iron and we just slosh it around and we take this tiny little film brush and just apply it to the uh, video, the oxide of the videotape, the two inch wide tape, and um, it would um, then immediately show up and the alcohol would evaporate and would just leave a pattern. And then you could line it up with a, um, we, we generated a, a little magnetic, uh, I mean a little splicing block because there, there was nothing to edit videotape with. So we had the machine shop at NBC uh, right next to me create a two inch wide aluminum channel with a chunk taken out of the middle so that we could actually run a razor blade down there and the first tape splicing we did, we would develop these little images, find the right sp spot, take a stainless steel ruler, because you couldn't use anything magnetic on it, hold it down with your fingers and take a standard single edge razor blade and make a swift cut down one side. And then we do the same to the other. And then we take the splicing tape, which was a quarter of an inch wide and it was a quarter of a thousandth of an inch thick. It was so flimsy, it was almost impossible to hang on to. And then we would have to deftly lift the two ends of these tapes, uh, of the two edges up, and we would then tap this, the glue side of the, of the adhesive down, and then take another razor blade and trim the outside edges so that it would line up with the width of the tape. The whole process would take about five minutes to do it right. And that was very, very, very tedium, tedious and cumbersome, to say the least. And so um, we, little by little, we began to develop 
new devices, new splicing devices. Uh, the first one was a, um, a device that would have a little door that would hold the tape in place and put pressure on, and you could lock it there so the tape wouldn't slide around after you cut it. And uh, that was okay, And but the problem was we couldn't really find a place uh, to cut it uh, correctly every time. This had to be cons consistent. So we would, um, we then, I think Ampex came out with one and they put a microscope on it. And they modified the door with a latch on it and a little roller that if you moved it just a, a little bit, it would move the tape ever so slightly. So now we had complete control over positioning and moving the tape and holding it exactly where we wanted it. And by looking through the microscope, we could see these pulses that were blown up 40 times. So it really a piece of cake because you couldn't, you didn't have the eye strain, because I used to get terrible eye strain from time to time uh, because of this um, staring at this, you know, with, first without the uh, um, microscope and then with the microscope, it wasn't that good because then I had to look down and find out where I was going to try to make the cut. Well, Ampex took two pieces of glass, positioned them in such a way that there was a tiny slit and that's where the razor blade would go and you'd put the razor blade in that little slit and give it a swipe and that would cut the ends of it. This, this whole thing was getting better but it was much too difficult to use for any kind of major production work. 